so drink water throughout. This is not going to be a fast-paced exercise. If you have weights that are uh, or a series of exercises, if you have weights that are lighter than you need, you can add some reps to this to make it challenging. If you have weight that is heavier than you need, you could do fewer reps to make sure that your form stays precise. If you're confused about your form, I'll let you know what's going on. Um, but uh, if something's bothering you, let me know. I want to make sure that you're not doing anything that's going to hurt you. Um, I want to make sure that everybody has, has fun, feels like everything is organized, safe, pleasant. Are we rolling? All right. The story for today is about mice and a cat. And these mice all live inside of an old house. And the cat that lives in the house with them is terrorizing them. And the mice, when they go into the pantry, the cat looks for them in the pantry. When they go up upstairs in the bedrooms, the cat's looking for them. And everywhere the mice try to run and uh, either find food or play, the cat's pouncing on them. And they're, they're getting fed up. They're getting, they're getting beat up. They're tired of this bully trying to run them, run, run them out of the house. So they get together, and they start to come up with some ideas, some solutions of what they could do to fix this cat problem that they have. They got the younger mice. They got the older mice. And the older mice is like, cat's too big, too strong, too fast, too smart. The younger mice are like, well, we don't need to like, you know, uh, disable the cat. We just need to know when the cat's coming. We could hang a bell on on the cat so that we could hear it when it comes up the stairs and when it's sneaking around trying to get us. And uh, one of the older mice is like, okay, that's a great idea. But who's brave enough to try and put a bell on this killing machine that's, that's hunting us? Who's going to do it? Who's going to step up? And, um, and the mice were scared nobody wanted to move forward and the original moral of the story was if you have an idea that you can't yourself implement maybe don't bring it up but Bootsy pointed out that that's sort of a, a short-sighted argument because there's lots of ideas that are good ideas that maybe you don't know how to implement Don but maybe Joe or maybe Aaron or maybe other Joe know how to implement it. Together, we are smarter and stronger than any one of us individually. So it's, if you have a good idea, somebody else might be able to help you implement that. So don't try to defeat the cat on your own. Ask for a little help from your fellow mice in the dojo. You know, you know what I mean? OK. So we are going to revive the jumping jack. Oh, yeah. It's been too long. I know everybody was waiting for it. So I'm going to put on the music. We're going to do some jumping around. And we're going to have fun. Yeah, if you can't jump, if you have an ankle and foot problems or something, you can do squats while we do jumping jacks. OK? All right. So excited. I got the first five. You got the second five. We're going to do the standard jumpy jack, the cross jack, the seal jack. Ready? Go! One, two, three, four, five! Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five! One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All year. Second set. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. Go! One, two, three, four, five! Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Last set. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Put, 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 put. One, two, three, four, five. Louder, louder. One, two, three, four, five. What? 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 All right. Now that we've loosened up, warmed up, we're going to get on the ground. Got some knee protection here for you. We're going to stretch the lat and the pec. Try and loosen up that shoulder before we totally destroy your shoulders today. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be in this lunge hip flexor stretch, just like Andrew naturally assumes whenever he stops moving. And I'm going to squeeze my glute, push my hip forward, reach up to the sky. My left knee is down, my left arm is up. And then I'm going to cross, I'm going to pull away. If you're tight like me, you can have a little help. But I'm going to lengthen the lat on that side. And I'm going to take my palm and I'm going to try and push it to that wall over there. Taking a big breath. Whoo! Yeah. One more big breath. I'm gonna relax. Switch feet. Right knee down, right hand to the sky. Stretching up, pushing that hip forward. Taking that palm, reaching out. Get a little assistance here. Whew. Trying to touch that far wall. Take three big breaths. When you inhale, that rib cage expands. When you exhale, try to relax your face. That'll help relax the muscles of the chest and the shoulder as well. One more breath. Nice. Now we're going to be face down on the ground and I'm going to reach out with my left hand, grip the earth, and I'm gonna kick my right foot over my body and try to plant it on the other side. Whew. It's normal to feel, feel that in the bicep, in the pec, in the shoulder. You want to let your breath do your stretching for you. You don't want to force it. Whew. We're going to switch sides, roll over, kick it out, drop your foot over the back. So the closer your hand is down to your leg, the easier the stretch is. If you want to make the stretch harder, you move that hand away from your foot and push your palm into the ground. So I'm like trying to give the earth a big hug. One more big breath. Relax. Awesome. So, we've stretched those tight muscles in the upper body. Now we're gonna do some pattern correction. We're gonna activate those muscles a little bit differently. So you got your band. I'm taking the band spreading it apart, rib cage stays down. I'm gonna to touch the back of my body, the back hip, all the way over, touch the front of my hip. I'm keeping a moderate tension on the band the whole time. Not trying to crush it, but also I don't wanna relax. So we're gonna do 10 reps to the front, 10 reps to the back, not too fast or slow. 
kind of might feel like a stretch. You feel like you're warming up some muscles. Yeah. Don't forget to breathe while you're doing this. Now I'm gonna grip my band. I'm only gonna need half of it. This is a challenging one. Palms facing down, creates some tension. My thumbs will always point towards each other, but what will happen is I will separate the band and I'll pull one hand low, one hand high, and then I'll come back to the center, one hand low, one hand high, that's one. So every time I do both sides, it's another rep. I'm trying to get my pinkies to break the plane of my back, to get those shoulders to come all the way back behind me. Yes, it burns on rep two. Imagine how rep 10 is gonna feel. Yeah. Woo! Waking up some of those muscles that we haven't been using in a while. Since March. Since March. Elbows straight for me, Chris. There you go. Now I'm awake. So once you get to 10, you can relax. Shake it out. So really hitting that posterior chain. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on scapular retraction. Let's go ahead and step on your band. And you're going to grip palms facing into your body, into your calf. It's like you're doing it, like you're about to pick up a deadlift, but then you're going to row. So I'm going to be in that L shape and I'm going to squeeze my shoulder blades together, bring them back down, shoulder blades together, back down. So constant tension, I'm trying to keep that long spine. Good. The hands should be able to get below the knees. So you want to be bent over, chest is up. You should feel this tension in the hamstring. Squeezing those shoulder blades together, 10 reps. Andrew, beautiful hinge. Clearly he's been practicing. Nice, Juliana. Good job on keeping those elbows close to the body, Cassandra. Sandra, Cassandra, Cassandra? Cassandra. All right. So. Shoulders are a little bit warmed up. We're going to do one more set of uh, over and unders or over and overs, depending on who you are. Just to pre-fatigue those stabilizer muscles. So we're going to do 10 to the front, 10 to the back. We have dumbbells. Hopefully everybody has a pair of dumbbells in front of them. We're going to do a pair of exercises, a curl to press, and didn't have 50, so I just had to grab the 10s. Sorry. <clears throat> a curl to press and a split stance row. So the curl to press. If you could do it kneeling, I'd like you to do it kneeling because it makes the pillar more challenging. The pillar, when I say pillar, I mean my glutes are on so that my pelvis is gently tilted back. My rib cage is depressed, so I'm, I'm a straight line now. So I don't have that superhero pose, I'm flat. From here, I'm going to curl up to my shoulder and then I'm going to press, keeping that rib cage down Legs lock, glutes on, get that bicep near my ear. So I'm pushing up, coming back down. That's one. Curl, press. Everybody give me five reps right now so I know we're on the same page. 
And let's do it kneeling if you've got the capacity. Because when you're kneeling, you can push the earth apart or your mat apart and fire up those glutes. And you'll notice it traps you. It traps that pillar. And you have a good base now. And then you could do your curls. And then you could press overhead. And then your hamstrings could cramp. And you can be like, what is happening? I thought it was gun show day. All right. Good job spreading the earth apart. Cassandra, nice work. Jessica, couldn't find the 50s either, huh? All right, five reps, everybody's looking good. Now you should feel this kind of burning in the glutes because it's a position we don't usually get to do. We don't get to press out with our knees. When you're done with that exercise, for this series, we're gonna superset that with a split stance row. So, I want this to look really good, so we're gonna do this together. Right now, I want people to get into a, basically like a five and a half, six foot wide lunge. Lead shin is vertical. Most of my weight's here on the lead shin. Back leg is straight. My back, I'm gonna be as deeply inclined as I can get without flopping over. So I'm gonna be pretty darn vertical. I'm gonna prop my elbow on my knee, but I'm still working on that long back. I, I have ape arms, so I can touch the ground. You may not be able to do that, that's okay. But we're gonna row with our thumb pointed in, pulling that shoulder blade into the spine. It's like we're starting a lawnmower. Give me, give me five reps on each side so I know we're all on the same page. Five reps without the, without the weight, no weight. Mind over muscle, or <laughs> mind muscle connection. Nice, pull that elbow into the rib cage, Cassandra. Good, nice. As you pull the elbow to the ceiling, I want you to think about it dragging to the hip bone so that that lower lat engages and really fires up your obliques at the same time. I know what Don's thinking, he's like, dude, I walk around with my obliques flexed all day. Thumb's gonna point inside to the rib cage. There you go, yes. Yes, Jessica, you're looking exactly right. Joe, ideal, now get a longer stride. Give me that back foot back. Perfect. Deep row, baby. Yep. Okay. You have your assignment. Eight curl to presses, 12 rows. Yes, 12 rows. So, four sets. You're not gonna rest between the press and the row, but you will rest at the end for 60 seconds to let your heart rate come down so you can be strong and lift heavier weight. What I want you to do is for the first round, check in with yourself. When you're done with your eighth rep of overhead presses, ask yourself, could I do two more? And then just think about the answer because I'm gonna pull you again when you're done. So let's go. Curl to press on the knees, eight reps, glutes on, boom, boom, down. That's one. So when you're doing these curls and the presses, explosive up, fast up, control down, 1,000, 1,000. So each, each descent gets its own phase, about a second, second and a half per movement. Pressing those knees apart, exploding up. When you're done with your eighth rep, check in with yourself. Could I do two more good ones? or three. Ask yourself how many, but then go right into your split stance row. Nice and deep, long split. Nice, l getting low. Thumb pulled in to the rib cage. Starting that lawnmower. 12 with the right hand, 12 with the left. Great position, Andrew. Looking good, Caleb. Caleb, elbow to the hip bone. Pull that elbow down to the hip on the way up. Really activate that lat, yeah! I can see your lat from here, bro. What's happening? When you're finished, 
look at the clock and make sure that you're getting about 45, 60 seconds of rest at least so you could be strong. Thumb's going to point to the rib cage for me, Joji. Remember, so twist it in so it's actually put more all the way in. There you go. That's called a pronated grip. Pronated, neutral, supinated. Soup. <laughs> okay, that was round one. Who here could do one more rep pretty easily on the curl to press? Two more reps. Three more. It, not, not a lot of hands up. Okay. If you, if you could do three more, then you can add a few reps. If you're like, I don't know, one, one might be pushing it, you're perfect. So you can go a, little, go a little bit further on this next round if it feels good. But if you, can, if you only have one good one in the tank, keep it because it might be bad when you go to pull it out. Now, 60 seconds of rest. We're going back to the superset. Go, go, gadget, lifting. All right. Great tempo, Joe. Boom. So make sure you're breathing. If I'm here in this pillar, my glutes are on, I'm pushing the knees apart. I'm inhaling and exhaling at my own pace. My heart rate's kind of high. I'm not trying to time the breath too much to any specific movement. It doesn't need to be a power breath. As long as you're getting that breath in and out, you're doing it right. If you have to hurry, you're doing too many reps, you're going a little too fast. Might be a little bit too heavy. If you've got control of it, then you're, you're doing it right. Rib cage goes down, glutes stay on on the way up. Big long stride. Thumb's gonna point into the midline of the body. Back is long and straight. Elbow's gonna pull alongside the rib cage as I get that low single arm row. How are we doing, Jessica? How's the knee? Good? Nice. Thumb points inside now. There you go. The whole time. Yeah. It's kind of challenging, right? Yep. It uses slightly different muscles. It's awkward. Your brain likes that, though. Your brain likes a little stranger, a little, little change up. Nice long stride there, Aaron. Looking good. Get that elbow to the hip bone or I'll end you, Caleb. I can see you. There you go. When that lat turns on, I can see it from over here again, man. 12 reps on the row. Thumb's going to point inside, Don. All the way inside. So you're going to, to rotate that dumbbell until it points in. There you go. And then the elbow's going to come towards your hip bone. So you're going to pull that bicep into the rib cage. Everything's going to come in tight. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Long stride on the back end. Lock out that back leg. There you go. Nice. See how you almost start to rotate, Jessica? That's good. That's, that you're getting that maximum contraction. All right, it's round two. We've got two more rounds. So was that one easier or harder than the last one? Harder? Everyone's harder? Okay. So the heat and the reps are adding up. So take that 60 seconds. Make sure that you're managing your energy. Make sure you're drinking. I like to go through about a liter of water when I'm training. I see everybody going monster on the water here. That's good. Uh, you're probably going to sweat out about a liter of water anyway, so eh, you're breaking even. <clears throat> okay. One of the reasons why th this, this exercise is so good to be paired together is because in one movement you're stretching the lat and in the other movement you're contracting the lat. So you're pulling and lengthening and pulling and lengthening. And you, when you walk away today, your posture is going to feel really good. You're going to be like, I'm taller. All right. That's right. Rib cage down, Cassandra. Good job, Juliana. Awesome. All right, squeeze that butt, Chris. I see you. Yes. Now, when you squeeze your glutes, also squeeze your fists. 
create more tension in the hands and that's going to make it easier to move that weight all the way up. If you need to, count out loud, 1,001 on the way down. Up, 1,000, 1,000, 2,000. By counting, I keep myself sane and I, I don't forget where I'm at. Nice work, Joe. Long stride there, Aaron, yes. Good work. Nice, Joe G. Try to pull that elbow closer to your body on the way up. Yeah. It'll feel weird. That's okay. So Cassandra, that, that dumbbell doesn't have to go high to the chest. When you pull low, it might come down here. Yeah, there you go. That looked better. It's just like you don't you don't need to chicken wing it. You don't want to chicken wing it if you don't ha if you don't have to. There you go, Aaron. Nice, looking good, man. Yeah. Yep. When in doubt, try to have your elbow meet your hip bone. Lock out that back leg, Jessica. Good. And that thumb, Jessica, try to get it below the rib cage, the rib cage down here. That's going to pull it into your body a little bit more. That's OK. All right. More music, same music, less music. How are we doing? Good. OK. All right, that was round three. So this is the last set. This is it. All right, make it look good. This is the one your body's going to remember. So if you want to do a couple extra reps, great. If you can't finish the set, go slow. Get that maximum contraction. Even if you do one rep, make it perfect. It's always about quality, never about qual or quantity. So squeezing the glutes, separating the knees, driving the hips forward, rib cage down, curling. On my way up, I'm squeezing both my glutes and my fists to create a little extra neural drive. Getting strong. Boom. You'll notice that the apex of that movement is quite challenging. Keeping the rib cage down while you're going overhead is kind of tough. That's okay. Bam. Excellent. Good work. Man, everybody chose perfectly. I love the technique. Everyone's looking so sharp. <clears throat> Go from there into that split stance row. 12 on the left, 12 on the right. And a, when I'm pulling, I kind of let my thumb flop over the head of the dumbbell so I could see it. it kind of keeps me focused. And then I end up pulling the thumb into my body. What that does is that helps that shoulder line up. So I'm pulling everything in tight. Nice work, Cassandra, Juliana, Caleb. Yeah, elbow to the hip bone. Hip bones connected to the Earlobe, the earlobe's connected to the big beard. <laughs> nice.
Finish strong. Yes. Okay. So that was the uh, that was the intro operation. Now we're gonna do a bunch of fun shoulder stuff. We're gonna do eyes. We're gonna do T's, and we're going to do. Um, uh, Back. The perfect back extension. Thank you. I was like trying to look through Joe for some reason. But the first, the first time through, we're going to do with no bands or no weights. And then I'll show you how to use a band if you want to make it really hard, uh, much more challenging. But the I, we're going to be in the hinge position. I'm going to drop my butt back. And I'm going to go directly overhead. My palm's going to face the ground. Bicep's going to be here by the ears. I'm going to, I'm going to push kind of like I'm swimming. My palm will now face the ceiling. And when I get here, my fingertips are going to drift away from my ears. So I'm lengthening that neck and keeping it long when I go back overhead. Every time I come up and down, that's one. So I'm going to go up, down 15 times. Butt goes back. Crown of the head goes long. I'm leaning forward into the balls of my feet. Yeah, keep that butt high and back there, Don. Yeah, like you're ski jumping. Beautiful. Yeah, arms stay close to you. Nice, Juliana. Nice, Cassandra. Pressure on the ball, the big toe. Caleb, chest up. Walk tall, have a firm handshake. Yes, you're training your upper back. You're training your lower back. Elbows straight, Chris. Move that butt high and back, baby. I really want you to reach back there. Feeling the hammies, Chris? That's what I want. Nice, AA Ron, chest up, long spine. 15. From there, we're going to go into the T. So I'm hinged out, squeezing the shoulder blades together at the top, coming back down. Shoulder blades together, coming back down. 15 reps, open and shut. Yeah, yeah. Butt back, chest up. Bending the knees there, Andrew. Yes. Chest up, Aaron. Get along. Nice. The thumb should end up being aligned with your ear. So it shouldn't be back down here. It should actually be up here by your face in that same plane. Nice work, Joe. Joe G. Yes. Chris. Joe Brookings. Chest up, buddy. Chest up. Get tall, Joe. There you go. You might say, like, gosh, I really feel this a lot on my back. And I would say, you're right. You're absolutely right. Then you're going to get on the ground. And the perfect back extension, this is an isometric hold where we're flexing our quadratus lumborum. Ooh. It's a, uh, it's a postural muscle. Uh, we're actually doing a lot of uh, upper back work at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a swimmer. I'm going to splay my fingers. I'm going to pull my elbows down towards my hips, shoulder blades are going to come together and everything is going to come away from my ears. So I'm getting, I'm pushing those elbows towards the hip. Hands are coming up underneath the elbows, but I'm not touching the ground. Eyes are looking 12 inches in front. My spine is long and I'm holding it for 15 seconds. Starting in three, two, go. All right, 15 seconds. Elbows down towards the waist, Joe G. Squeezing those shoulder blades together. Everything's coming away from the ears. Look at that. That was 10 seconds already. We got five more seconds. Elbows towards the hips there, Don. Bring those hands underneath the elbows, closer to your body, spreading the rest. Yeah. Fire it up. All right, that was one round. All right, we got two more rounds. So we're going to go back to the eye. I wouldn't recommend using your band with this or weight because it's so it's so such a tough postural exercise. Here, back overhead. Elbows are locked. Overhead. Back. Up. Back. Yes. Butt back, chest up, long spine. There you go. If you feel this in your hamstrings, you're doing it right. If you feel this in your low back, you're also doing it right. If you just feel it in your low back, examine your foot pressure. 
Are you feeling it in the ball of the pinky toe? Are you feeling it in the ball of the big toe? Are you using your whole body together as a unit? Our low backs need strengthening. This is good stuff. This is, uh, this is where we need to be. Now, we're going to go into the T. If you want to make this one really fun, you can hold your band, palms up, bend over, and then you squeeze the shoulder blades together at the apex. And you can do a resisted T. If you found that was hard enough last time, you do not have to progress the exercise. I'm just showing you something you can do to make your life more fun. <laughs> Jessica was like, oh, hell nah. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right, Caleb. Nice. Perfect posture there, buddy. Looking good, Chris. Andrew. Nice work, man. Does that feel okay? Good. Once you're done with that round, lie down in the perfect back extension. We're going to go 15 seconds again. Remember, it's about tension. So you're going to pull the elbows towards the hip bones with your eyes looking at a space in the floor 12 inches in front of you. We're going to do it together starting in three, two, and go. It's only 15 seconds. Nice. Elbows towards the hip bones. Fingers splayed out, really activating the hands. Pulling the elbows into the sides. Eyes 12 inches in front of you. Joe G's posture looking great. Jessica, elbows in closer. Pull those hands underneath the elbows. Nice work, Andrew. Hands underneath the elbows. And scene. Nice. That was round two. Only one more round left to go. Goose. All right. So we're going right back to the eyes. We're not resting a lot. We're working the type one muscle fibers, so we're not trying to give them a lot of time. We want to burn them out because that's what they like. That's what they respond to. We want to get those reps in. Nice. Chest up for me, Aaron. Chest up for me, Joe. Bend the knees more. Let the butt drift backwards. Bring your, head, your chest up. Pressure. Yeah, there you go. That's not bad. Keep that lifting that chest, though. Nice work, Jessica. 15 reps. No big deal. This is the last set. From here, you're going into the T. I'm bent over. Squeezing their shoulder blades together. Firing up those rear deltoids, rhomboids, triceps, medulla oblongata. Just seeing who's listening. Bend those knees, Joe. Chest up, buddy. Get low like you're, uh, I don't know a lot of sports that involve uh, skiing positions. It's like tennis. No. That's not it. Bend the knees, Andrew. Chest up. Nice work, Cassandra. Good job, Juliana. Chest up, Chris. Long spine. Leaning forward, baby. Sorry, I didn't mean to call you baby. I know that was inappropriate. We're on the ground doing the perfect back extension. Starting in five, four, three, two, boom. All right, we're moving. Elbows into the hips. Fingers splayed wide. Nice work, Cassandra. That looks great. Juliana looking good. Chris, hands underneath the elbows. Pull everything into your, yeah, even more. Elbows down towards the waist. Three, two, one, rest. All right. All oh, yeah. Now we're going to do some chest tries and abs. So 
We're going to do the glute bridge floor press. Then we're going to do a plank up down. Then we're going to do a plank iso hold. And we're going to get extremely tight on the form for this iso hold. The glute bridge floor press. What I'm doing is I'm here on the ground. Feet are flat. I'm going to drive my hips up into the air as high as I can. I'm going to press. I'm going to press. I'm going to go down 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, explode as soon as the tricep touches the ground. And as the dumbbells descend, my arm is at a 45 degree angle, so I'm in kind of narrow. It's going to feel a little weird, that's OK. But you're going to control everything with your chest and tries. As soon as you feel the skin on the ground, you're going to power out. That's one rep. You're going to do six reps. And on the, when you're done with the sixth one, you're going to roll over and immediately go into a plank up down where your hips are going to stay low. And you're going to come up, back down for one, then come back the way you came on the hands. And you're going to do 12 up downs. And from there, you're going to drop right into an iso hold. You're already in the plank. So you're just going to stay there, feet and knees together, hips low, long spine. Uh -uh, good. All right, let me see those six floor presses. 6, 12, 24, no rest in between. Nice work. Feet closer to your hips there, Jessica. Nice job on that bridge, Joe. Squeezing those glutes, getting those butt in the air, yep. Now you're gonna roll right over and you're gonna go plank up down, starting on your elbows to your hands, back to your elbows is one. All the way up, all the way down, that's two. Feet are gonna be wide so you don't fall over. Nice. Now what I want you to do is maintain that hip, hip Position, rib cage is gonna be pulled in. So we don't, yeah, we don't wanna have a hyperextended back. We want everything to be solid and working together. So breathing the whole time, pressure into those obliques, breathing wide. On the 12th rep, you're gonna stop and do an iso hold for 24 seconds. Feet and knees together in that iso hold, Don. So you're gonna squeeze your shoes together, squeeze your glutes. You're just gonna count in your head to 24, I trust you, S except for Juliana. Squeeze your glutes, Juliana. Squeeze your shoes together. Squeeze those excellent matching shoes that I'm so jealous of. Hips down, Juliana. There you go, there you go. You feel what I'm saying? Did you feel that? Yes. Now you know what that feels like, so that's what I want you looking for every time. Feet and knees together, Jessica. Squeezing everything tight, squeezing everything tight. Glutes on. All right. So, I want to practice that, uh, that ISO hold plank for a split second with you guys because I probably should have done it at the beginning because I want you to have the kinesthetic awareness of what it feels like when you're there versus when you're almost there because they're really close together. So I want everybody to get into the plank, the elbow plank, with your feet together. And I want you to be comfortable with your hips just a little bit high. Now, with your hips just a little bit high, all I want you to do is create a tug of war between your elbows and toes. So tug of war between your elbows and toes. Pull your elbows down to your toes, toes down to your elbows, and drop the hips down just a little bit. There you go. Do you feel that grabbing right around your belly button? That's the signal that you're in the right spot. Perfect, Andrew. Yes, Juliana, you're doing great. Nice, Cassandra, how's it feeling? Good, okay. So that's the signal that you're in the correct position. I want you looking for that. And then again, I'll help you find it if you're, if you're needing help. So grab some water, a little bit of rest. We're going to go 6, 12, 24 again. No rest until you get to the end. Yes, it is hot in here. But that is all right. It's conditioning. It's only 87 degrees. It's actually gotten cooler. Two degrees cooler. And you didn't even notice. All right, warriors. 
Hey, I know it's tough. We're going we're gonna to finish strong, though, okay? Two more rounds. Floor press from the bridge, squeezing those glutes, breathing the entire time. Nice. Push it through the center of your foot, getting those hips high. Getting oxygen that whole time, nice. Slowly dropping down, great work. As soon as you feel that skin on the back of your tricep, you press and you roll over and you're gonna do up downs, all the way up, all the way down, that's one. All the way up, all the way down, that's two. It's, it's, uh, it's softer on your elbows on a pad. It's also slippier, slip, more slippery. Nice, Joe, you got this, baby. Finish strong, drive, on, drive it on home. Yes, that's right, Caleb. It's too easy. Butt down there, Chris, butt down. Tug of war between the toes and the elbows. Shoulders away from the ears, creating that tension. That creating that tension. Flatten out that back. Drop the rib cage down. Squeeze the butt cheeks together. Everything's tight. There you go. There you go. It's getting better, baby. Yeah. Finish strong with that isometric. Flatten that back out, Cassandra. Hips up just a little higher. There you go. Turn it around. Nice. Shoulders away from the ears, Don. There you go. Joe Brookins, hips just a little higher for me. There you go. Tug of war. Tug of war. Toes. Nice. Your way is good. I just want you to do it right next time. Yeah, good talk. All right. That was round two. That was the hardest round because in this round, it's the final round. It's the last set. Last set. Last set.